Hello friends and welcome to the video. Over the past year, either in person or online, I've had a number of people express their frustrations trying to use a, a laser to build RC airplanes. And I get it, man. And when I started, it, yeah, it was a disaster. I decided to kind of back up and not get too complicated. And so here's an example. So I put those in there and this one right here uh, with a handsaw and a drill and sandpaper. Woo, man, it was probably a couple of hours worth of work. And I whittled it down to just a few minutes. I thought, okay, yeah, this laser thing is gonna work. Let's take a look at this, how precise a cut you can get. And here's my little uh, wing jig thing. I got a video going about that, if you wanna check that out. Now I'm to the point on some of these little electrics where I'm not even using paper plans at all. I'm cutting everything with the laser, the sheathing, the ribs and everything, and even putting little marks in. So when I glue the ribs in, have a look at that. Uh, there's no way I could be that precise doing that by hand. To try to keep you from getting frustrated in the beginnings, I wanna go through a number of things that frustrated me and uh, how you can bypass those things. So let's do 10 tips on getting started using light burn and a laser to build RC airplanes. Tip number one, and I'll preface this by saying I'm not trying to sell you anything. Uh, nobody sponsors me, so on and so forth. I started with this little old $250 laser, and actually it worked pretty decent. A couple of hiccups, the controller did not like light burn, and so I had to uh, go in, do a little studying, and, and kind of put a hack in there to, to make it work, and I won't even go into that crap. Make sure what you get works with light burn. Why light burn? It's got a 2D CAD program along with the laser controller, and the 2D CAD is all you need for balsa airplanes. Okay. Tip number two, get well acquainted with whatever laser you're using. You're gonna be working with different types of wood, some thick and soft, uh, thin and soft, little thicker and hard. You're gonna be working with different stuff and you need to know what your laser is capable of. Uh, for example, this little piece cut in one pass, but I was probably running, I believe it was like a four on my speed and 100% on the laser. Uh, whereas this being balsa, still, you know, took just a few seconds to cut it out, but I had to run the speed quite a bit more if I was gonna run 100% power, I could have cut the power down, but I found that running 100% power and jacking that speed way up there got the job done more quickly and it still didn't catch fire so that's all good take my word for it there's a reason i keep a fire extinguisher handy okay tip number three start small going back to the last tip if you uh if this is all you're trying to cut out and you've got you got it going too slow and it ends up catching fire you can put that out real quick and save your wood uh if you go to cut out something really complicated, you know, this was all cut out that in one sheet, all the little square, everything was cut all at one time. But if I didn't have the right speed or the right power or the right whatever, it could have gotten halfway through and set on fire and ruined that entire piece of wood. Tip number four, measure twice, cut once. Uh, remember the cheating the shooting telemaster if you've seen that video where I cut these way too thin and so on the finished product I went back in made the boxes smaller which gave more meat on these things right click on your piece go down to preview and have a look at it before you cut every time before you cut just just do it for the heck of it and uh, it'll show you exactly what it's fixing to cut out and could save you yeah having to redo some stuff. Tip number five, pay attention to the grain. Uh, your plans are gonna show you what grain to cut out different things. Uh, there's some some stuff about, I mean, you jump in there and, oh yeah, I'm gonna cut out all these ribs all at once and then you actually do the grain that way and they're pretty flimsy. 
Uh, an alternative to that is, say you're gonna do a quarter inch thick piece and you wanna just cut it out with the laser instead of hand building it, take two 16 inch pieces of balsa, run your grain opposite directions, 90 degrees from each other, glue the two together, you old style builders know that that's gonna add a lot of uh, strength to that balsa wood. Tip number six. Now, my laser, both of them, they don't have any of the end stops, nothing like that. And so if I'm gonna go from one thing to another, I'll kill the power to the laser and I'll set it back manually to its home position. So in other words, catch a piece, kill the power, reset your, manually reset your laser head to the home spot, change your wood out, change out what you're doing in light burn, turn the power back on, and then do your framework, make sure it's still hitting right. Tip number seven, cardboard is your friend. Practice on cardboard before you start using your wood. Uh, you might wanna turn the heat down quite a bit, turn your speed up quite a bit. All it's really gotta do is mark on the cardboard. It ain't even gotta cut it out. But if you're doing a large complicated piece, good idea to practice on something that you're gonna throw away anyway and then just don't forget to set your power back to what you're gonna be needing to actually cut the wood and reframe and then go. Tip number eight goes back to measure twice, cut once. That includes thickness of your wood. You see how this is a lot thicker than this piece. So your laser may hit that just right to get a good fine cut. But when you throw another piece of wood in there and don't adjust, you could end up with these wide, not cutting very well, trying to catch fire or just almost catching fire because you're too far away from the wood because this is thinner than what you were doing before. So double, triple, quadruple, all measurements. Tip number nine has a backstory that's 50 years old. I remember elementary class going to class one day, the teacher says the president, Jimmy Carter, has mandated we learn the metric system where we'll have millimeters, centimeters, and liters instead of gallons, and so on and so forth. And well, I balked, my classmates balked, and the entire United States said, no, we're not gonna change. Well, maybe we should have, because, you know, think of all the fractions and decimal classes that we wouldn't have had to do if we'd learned the metric system. Uh, Lightburn will accept inches. You put in like one I in enter, and it'll change it to millimeters. Uh, it really wouldn't hurt for you to get something that measures in millimeters uh, to make things easier on you in building airplanes. Yeah, think about that. Tip number 10 has a multi-part uh, bonus material. We'll call it that. Okay. Uh, this is how I set up my light burn. First, go to edit settings. I take off the beginner mode because it allows me to put the fire button in there. And I actually go ahead and leave this on better for CO2 millimeters a second. It just, on this part up here, it jumps your numbers way up because you're doing millimeters per minute and crap like that. And it's, to me, I just, I got used to this being that way. So like my speed on this one here is 20 and power is 100 that's probably going to be like eighth inch hardwood uh, light ply something like that you may want to write it down once you find something that works on a certain type of material with your particular laser you might want to jot that information down for reference set those and then go back to edit and device settings i enable laser fire button which is right there, and laser on when framing. That is really cool because you put a piece in here. Let's just say, throw this in right quick. Put it right there, and you're trying to figure out where to put your wood. And so you go up here and hit frame, and your laser is going to come down, and it's going to do this rectangle around there. Now, once you've hit it once, at least on my laptop, once you've hit frame once, 
all I got to do is reach over and hit the space bar and it'll frame again and frame again however many times I hit it. And I can adjust my wood into where it's going to hit just right for that piece to be in there. Practice that kind of stuff, you know, and like I said before, always right click and preview. And that shows you what the laser is intending to do. Now, on this piece, I would want to change the color on that and cut the power on whatever that color is or something so that it didn't cut out 3 16 inch on my piece. But if you was to forget to do that, this is exactly what the laser is going to cut out. Okay, one more tip. Let's see. I mentioned this before. PDF vector files come in just like this. And you can actually use and manipulate. Uh, some of them are already put together. And so let's say I wanted to cut that piece. I could right click, duplicate, bring it over here. You're going to run this piece using a greater than, less than. Turn it 90 degrees. And so that your grain is going to be right. One more thing. I've talked about this before too, going under advanced in outer zone and coming down here. Here's where you can get your PDF vector files. And of course you can take that file. You can use my video on printing uh, full size plans at home and print it. And you can also put it into Lightburn and start manipulating it like I did just a bit ago. Now CAD files could have a little bit of a hiccup. Lightburn does not like DWG files, okay? DXF, it has no problem with. I have no idea why. It's an easy fix. So if you download the CAD files for something, because there are different ones under CAD than there are in PDF vector and vice versa, let's say you download a CAD file and it's DWG, go to this little dude right here, convert, select, DWG, you may have to type it in, DWG to, oh come on now, run off, DXF, okay, and it'll pop you up a little thing and then you can go to select the file from uh, where you've downloaded it, put it in there and it'll give you the opportunity uh, to download the changed file. So far, everyone I've ever messed with has worked just fine uh, changing DWG to DXF on this site. So, sound good, sound great. Man, I hope this uh, video helps you out a whole lot. Um, I understand your frustration. I've been there before. Still, you know, I'm not exactly expert. I'm kind of intermediate. And... Uh, I'm still learning stuff too, so happy flying, everybody.